welcome students in this lecture we are going to discuss some example problems related to the theory and concepts that we discussed in the lecture of estimation of difference of means right i would recommend you that if in order to proceed with this with this lecture or with these examples it is better that you go through that lecture again if you have missed it or just to remember the things question of the things in your minds i would just give you a quick overview of the of the formula that we discussed over there and uh, let's start with this lecture with, with that overview so yeah. so we discussed in that lecture that there are three ways to find the difference of means estimation one is the case number one where we have the samples taken from two separate populations but they have the same or equal variance and in that case we make use of this equation which is equation number one the difference of mean which is mu1 minus mu2 is given by mu3 and this is the equation in the second case when the samples are taken from two separate populations but they have unequal variances then the differences of the mean mean which is mu1 minus mu2 equivalent to mu3 is given by this equation which is written as um, in row two of this table and the last case that we discussed was the case where the two samples were taken from the same population then the difference of mean estimation uh, is was given by this equation which is mu d is equal to x t bar plus minus d s t upon root n where s t is a standard deviation of the new differences data set and x t bar was the mean of the new differences data set so i would recommend you that in order to have the details understanding of from where this formula came from and how did we end up with the conclusions of these formulae i would again ask you to go through that video lecture again so that you can recall the things in a better way so let's proceed with the examples the first example in a packing plant a machine packs cartons with jars it is supposed that a new machine will pack faster on average than the machine currently used an experiment was conducted to record the time taken to pack 10 cartons by new and present or old machine the results in the seconds are shown in the following table give 99% confidence interval for the difference between the mean time it takes the new machine to pack 10 cartons and the mean time it takes the old machine to pack 10 cartons now it's very very important that we understand the concept of this problem and i would emphasize on the concept of this problem because the calculations are not very much difficult but we should understand that the concept that is basically running in in this problem and in the problems that we'll see later on now over here we can see that we have two machines separate one is new machine and the other is the old machine so this basically gives us the key idea that new machine is population one and the old machine is population two they cannot be the same things because new machine is totally different from the old machine so we have two separate populations number one thing number two thing is this that from both these populations a single sample is taken one sample is taken from the new machine which we can call sample one and the second sample is taken from the old machine which we can call sample two so the second key thing is we have two samples the first key thing we had two separate populations the second key thing we had we have two samples right now the third important thing what we are required to find we are required to find the 99 percent confidence interval for the difference right please note this keyword difference difference means subtraction difference between the mean time it takes that is the average time it takes the new machine to pack 10 cartons and the average time or the mean time it takes the present or old machine to pack 10 cartons so we have to find the difference between the means right the difference between the means gives us a new mean value which we call the the differences of the mean or the difference of the means right and that is we want to estimate over here okay so it's again the same thing 
that using the samples x1 and x2 and their statistics which would be x1 bar and x2 bar respectively we are trying to find a new population which is the difference between the two populations the new machine population and the old machine population mathematically we are trying to do this thing but always remember that whenever we find the differences between the two conceptually we mean that how close these two things are if they are close to each other then it would mean that there is no difference between the two but if they are far away from each other then it would mean that they are different from each other so basically we are trying to find what we are trying to find that how much better the new machine is compared to the old machine right and this is the estimate which we are trying to make the more this estimate would come close to zero the more it will indicate that actually there is no differences between the two and the further it appears i mean it goes away from the zero i mean whether the negative side or the positive side the far the, the more it would indicate that there is yes differences between the new machine and the old machine and that is what we are trying to estimate over here this is what we are trying to estimate over here so we have the this data set the sample one the sample two the sample one mean is x1 bar the sample size for sample one is 10 and the standard deviation for sample one is 0.683 similarly for sample two the mean is 43.23 and the sample size is 10 and the standard deviation for sample size is 0 0.750 0.750 although these statistics are given in the question but it's not necessary that we are always provided with these statistics we should know how to work with them how to calculate them and if, for the, if you want to see the formula and the working then i would recommend you that go to my lecture of uh, population sampling and there's other lecture present in which we studied how we find the means and the standard deviation so that would definitely there those lectures would definitely help you to work out with the with the problems of finding the means and the standard deviations right so we discussed this thing that there are two separate populations that means it is the case of independent means and uh, in order to see that whether the variances are equal or not we use the ratio of s1 upon n2 or s2 upon n1 over here we see that the ratio of s1 upon n and s1 upon s2 gives a value which is 0 0.9106 close to one and very much in the interval of 0 0.5 and 2 this is indicating that this is the case of equal variances now, as you now understanding all these things, we can make use of this equation, which is mu1 minus mu2 is equals to mu3, which is x1 bar minus x2 bar equals plus minus t sp upon, sorry, sp under root 1 upon n1 plus 1 upon n2. So we need to first find these two things. We have x1 bar, x2 bar with us. We have s1 and 2 sorry, we have n1 and 2 with us. But right now, we don't have t and sp. So first, we'll find t and sp, and then we will proceed with this, with this equation to give us the final answer. Now we learned this thing that the old standard deviation or SP is calculated using the equation which is uh, which is again written over here. So plugging in the values gives us the pool standard deviation which is 0 0.717, right? So we have got one factor which was unknown in this equation. Now the remaining factor is T which is unknown. We also know this thing that the T value can easily be read out, can easily be read out using the T table. And for that purpose, what we need, we need the confidence interval values, we need the degrees of freedom, and we should know whether we look into the uh, two-tailed part or the one-tailed part. Now, the confidence interval is given to us, which is 99%, which means the level of significance is 0 0.01. First thing. Second thing, degree of freedom, we know that in the equal variances independent means case, this is L1 plus N2 minus 2. So 10 plus 10 is 20, 20 minus 2 is 18, that means the DF is each can easily be seen which is 18. Now always remember that whenever we are working with the estimation problems, we are always using the two tails of the distribution. So we have to look for the two tail uh, part of the table. Now how would we how would we look into the table? So this first arrow on the le top left is for the is of the two tails. Then there's an arrow pointing downwards at in the on the on the column which is 0.01. This was our significance level. Then our degree of freedom was 18. And we can see that the intersection of 18 with 0 0.01 is at 2.878.
this means that our t value is 2.878 so we have got everything to plug in in this equation and get to the get to the final answer so we, we do this thing now we plug in the value of t which is 2.878 we plug in the value of sp which is 0 0.717 we plug in the values of x1 bar which is 42.14 and x2 bar which is 43.23 and then n1 and n2 which is 10 in 10 right so we are trying to see please try to understand the concept that we are trying to see that how different is mu2 from mu1 or how different the old machine is from the new machine Okay, and at 99% confidence interval, we see that this difference is ranging from minus 2.01 to minus 0.17. That is, we are 99% confident that mu3, which is mu1 minus mu2, is between minus 2.01 and minus 0.17. And definitely, they would be in seconds. Now, very important, many important things to see, to understand from this result. First, what does negative sign mean? Negative sign means that since we were finding the difference of x1 bar minus x2 bar or mu1 minus mu2 that is mu1 was placed first and mu2 was placed second and remember uh, mu1 is corresponding to x1 bar that is it is the population one or the population of the new machines and mu2 is representing the x2 bar which is from the population two so a difference coming out to be negative means what it means that means that mu2 is greater than mu1 and remember our sample comprised of times which was in seconds right so if mu2 comes out to be greater than mu1 then it means what it means that this that the old machine is taking higher time than the new machine and remember the higher the time it takes the lesser the speed is so in order to have more speed the time should be as less as possible Concluding what? Concluding this, that mu1 is less than mu2, and that's why the sign is negative. And th this means that the new machine is faster than the old machine. So in this context, or in the context of this question, it means that estimation, that the estimation mean difference of packing, plant, packing time between the two machines at 99% confidence interval lies in the interval minus 2.01 and 0 0.1 in seconds. Negative sign shows that new machine is faster than the present or old machine throughout this interval. And so we, also can, we also can put it in this way that new machine can pack 2.01 seconds to 0.1 second, 17 seconds faster or earlier than the old or present machine. So the thing that I was mentioning that I was emphasizing was this, that I mean, besides working with the calculations, besides working with the mathematical uh, working it is rather more important in statistical inference to bet to, to to be able to interpret and conclude the results in a proper way in a way that is acceptable that makes some sense that is logical so it's very important to write your results in the context of the question as well let's move on to the second problem the example two now the example two states that independent random samples of 17 sophomores and 13 juniors attending a large university yield the following data on grade point averages. So we have basically some data set comprising of sophomores and juniors. And sophomores are basically second year and juniors are third year students in a four year graduate program. Uh, and this data set shows the GPS of sophomores, 17 sophomores and 13 juniors. At 5% level of significance, that is at 95% confidence interval, find the estimation of the difference of two population means corresponding to sophomores and juniors respectively. So this is again the problem of differences. We have to find the, the differences, that how much significant the differences are. Whether we are no, but I won't say the significance because otherwise you would get confused that we are doing some significant testing which we are not doing right now. We are just trying to estimate the difference between the GPAs of sophomores and the juniors. So again, sophomores would be taken as population one and juniors would be taken as population two. And the question is mentioned that we have to take the case of unequal variance. So we have two separate populations. The case of unequal variance, again, it's an independent means, uh, um, independent, independent means case. So we'll proceed it in this way that we'll first find our statistics, the sample sizes, the means, and the standard deviations, which, has, which can be seen over here in this slide. And then it is provided in this question that we have to case, take the case of unequal variances. 
So we will proceed with this equation that mu1 minus mu2 is equals to x1 bar minus x2 bar plus minus t, s1 square upon n1 plus s2 square upon n2. And again, we see this thing, we take it in this way, that population one is of sophomores um, corresponding to mu1 and x1 bar, and population two is of juniors corresponding to mu2 and x2 bar. So mu3 is equals to 2.84 minus 2.98 plus minus t and s1 square upon n1 plus s2 square upon n2 values plugged in. But t is unknown over here. We first have to find the t. And again, remember for t, we need what? We need the on two tail uh, on two tail part of the table. We have discussed this thing that in every estimation problem, we have to take two tail part. So on two tail part of the tail, uh, we and on the on at point um, zero five level of significance, we need to find at what df, at what row we are going to find the t. So the way we calculate the df in this case of unequal variances is quite weird looking formula, but it's not that much weird in working. So we just plug in the values, and after all this blah 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 calculations, we get an answer which is twenty six point five zero five. Now we must always remember this thing. That the sample size or the degree of freedom is always an integer number. So we have to decide whether we are going to round it off to 27 or truncate it to 26, truncate it to 26 so that it becomes an integer. There are different views of thoughts. I mean, one school of thought says that we have to uh, follow the rules of rounding the data so it, then it would become 27. And the second says that since DFs are less values, so we have to truncate it to a lower integer, which is 26. And you'll see in the table that. If you truncate it to a lower integer, then it gives a higher value of t, and the greater the value of t, the more the better is the estimation. So we'll truncate it to 26, and then we see in the table that on the two tails part and at 0 0.05 level of significance, and at the df of 26, we get 2.056 as the t value. So 2.056 is the t value. Remember, we are looking in the two tail part, right? So 0 0.05 is written in the two tail part as well as in the one tail part, but we are looking at it in the two tail part because it's an estimation problem. So we plug in this value of 2.056, and then finally we get the, the interval which ranges from minus 0 0.4437 to 0 0.1637. So at 95% confidence interval, sophomores have GPA lesser by 0 0.4437 and greater by 0 0.1637 as compared to juniors and that's quite understandable because again there's mu1 minus mu2 thing so minus sign indicates that mu1 is less than mu2 that is gps of sophomores are less than gps of juniors and a plus sign indicates that mu1 is greater than mu2 that is gps of sophomores are greater than the gps of the juniors right so that was the second problem. Now let's move on to the third example or the third problem. Now the question says that trace metals in drinking water affect the flavor and an unusually high concentration can pose a health hazard. Now for that purpose, 10 pairs of data were taken measuring zinc concentration in bottom water and surface water. Provide a 95% confidence interval estimation of mean for the difference of mean zinc concentration between bottom water and surface water. The data obtained is as follows. So what's happening over here is this, that we have a single population of water. And from that single population, we have taken two samples just to see the, check the concentration of, of zinc, the difference between the concentrations of zinc from the top surface of water and the bottom surface of water. So the bottom surface of water is given in the first row of the data, having the zinc concentration values, and the, bot and the top surface of water with zinc concentration values are given in the second row of this data set and here two samples are taken from the same population we first find new differences data set as follows so it's basically the third case having the same sample having the same populations so what we do now we first have to find the differences data set and that's how we calculate the differences this differences data set the sample one is for the bottom surface of water. These are all the zinc concentrations. Sample two, X2, sample one was written as X1. Sample two, X2, these are the zinc concentrations on the top surface of water. And then we find a new differences data set, which is the differences of the values, point to point differences, 
x t which is x one minus x two, and from in this differences data set which we name as x t, we find the mean value which is x t bar point zero eight zero four. We find the standard deviation which is s t point zero five two three. The d f is n minus one which is ten minus one which is nine, and then the t value. So again, we find the t value on the two tails part because again it's an estimation problem. And point zero five, we looked at the two tail part and nine the degree of freedom and the intersection comes out to be two point two six two, right? So we plug in this value of two point two six two in this estimation equation and we finally get the interval which is zero point zero four three to zero point one one seven six, which means that at ninety five percent confidence interval. The zinc content is 0.043 to 0.1176, right? Is higher in bottom surface to top surface. Now both these values are in positive, right? And this indicates that the zinc concentration is higher in bottom surface as compared to the top surface. And this is the interval range within which we can find the zinc concentration. So I hope that all these three examples are understandable to you people. The way we approach to these problems is very, very important. The conclusion and the interpretation and the context of this problem is again very, very important. If you have still any problems regarding any queries or confusions, any problems regarding these three examples or any other example related to this topic, then you can surely contact me and write down in your comments. So thank you very much.